Um, so I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you read something about into into ten then. Uh yes, I just glanced through the in the time the the definition. One of my one of my lectures, I think I mentioned that in time. The ankle tens. Yeah. I did. Uh, we didn't pay attention. I did. When I was talking about the meaning of FOB and CIF, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, you just censorship, yeah, I remember. Mm, I I mentioned remember. that in good terms, when I mentioned about letters of credit and all that, Yes, yes, yes. yeah, commercial terms, those are what you need to know. Because the terms, the freight for the freight, eh? CIF, CFR, free on board. You know, all those things are what we call the international commercial terms. Okay, so those are what we call inco terms. So um, we hope to throw more light so you could uh, get a bit more understanding the regulatory aspects and procedures and practices with international processes. So we'll look at inco terms and its obligations. What then are inco terms? Inco terms. I mean, basically, it's the sale of contracts between a seller and a buyer. The responsibilities of each time of delivery and transfer of risk. Okay, so it's, it should clearly state the risks and the liabilities of the seller and then also the buyer. This is why we spoke about those FOBS here. And all that because it clearly shows the risk, who has more risk and who has less risk, and to what extent does the risk start and where does where do they end? Inco terms are a set of living trades of for use in business to business contracts for the sale and purchase of goods. They are used within contracts, but are not substitute for contract of sale. They do not deal with things such as passing of title, quality of goods. Or the price, okay? So they do not deal with things such as personal of title, the quality of goods, or the price. What it means then is it is just how to do with the time delivery and then also the sale of the goods and not, not necessarily the, the pricing or the um the title of the goods. So um in shipping, that's what we call bill of lading. Have you heard it before? Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah, so bill of lading. So the bill of lading itself covers the title of the goods and all the shipment information. But when we come to incotents, it has to do with the transfer of goods, you understand? Okay. Yes, the transfer of goods pertaining to what um, transfer goods method the two parties have agreed on. So like I did say, Inco terms are divided into four principal categories E, F, C, and D. Where well, category E is more of a departure, which contains only one trade term. We say that XREX. I explained that to you if you remember the last time. Where XREX, I said, is more to do with the seller just producing the, producing the goods, and that's all. Okay? Yeah. The buyer takes all the risks from the point of factory to the destination. I explained this. Then category F, you have the FCA free carrier. Free AS, free along ship, that the, the goods are just delivered along the ship side, the key way, and then the seller does everything. The buyer does everything, sorry. And we have FOB whilst the goods are supplied on the ship, the liabilities and the responsibilities of the seller ends. The buyer's responsibility takes control from when the ships, the things are delivered on the ship. Then we have the C category, which he has, which is CPT, carriage pay to, the carriage pay to, or carriage and insurance pay to. So the buyer pays the carriage. That's what it means. And then it ends there. You know, so you pay the carriage paid up to probably, you are paid something from China. And when it ends somewhere in London, your the liability of the seller ceases. Or you might choose to pay the carriage and also the insurance that comes with it, okay? Mm. Yes, the yeah. buyer pays that. Okay? Or the seller pays that. Either way. 
Then we have the CFR, which is cost and freight. So you pay the cost of the shipment and the freight as well. Okay, where the freight is is on the goods, okay? Mm. Freight charges are on the goods, but the cost of transfer is something else. Do you understand? Yeah. Exactly. So that is also the area of CIA, which is the most commonly used cost insurance rate, okay? Mm. Yes, cost insurance rate. That they take off everything, cost insurance and the freight. CIA is the mostly used non clearing agent. Then we have category D, which is Arema, which contains stream method. You have the DDP, delivered duty paid, DAP, delivered at place, delivered at place, and that's it. Or DPU, delivered at the place unloaded. Delivered at the place unloaded. It means that delivered at place will be loaded. But DPU, delivered at place unloaded. Then DPP, delivered duty paid. Delivered duty paid. So these are four categories that you need to know when it comes to incoteps. Mm. These are things you need to know. Yeah. You may have questions on X works. You may be told that a man that that and this that and that. What do you think is the best mode the person would have to use? You understand me? Yeah. It depends on what the buyer wants. The buyer just wants the goods to be manufactured and he takes control of everything. Then you choose X works, isn't it? Yeah. If the buyer wants the seller to take off the cost, insurance, and freight and tally, they have to choose CI, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. So when you read more, and the link is below, okay? Mm. You could understand more about it. Um, but the commonly used one is CI, okay? Okay. CI. That's what most claim agents use. Cost, insurance, freight, okay? Mm. That's the most commonly used ones. CI. Cost, insurance, freight. Once they pay, all those have been paid, then you have a peace of mind, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So let's move further. So so there, there's a table here that tells you a bit. So from X-Works, you have to have an agreed place where the goods need to be delivered. Free carrier, also agreed place. Free carrier along ship, that is the port of loading. Go on the ship. Free on board, is also the port of loading. So those two areas have to do with the port of loading. The cost and freight is at the port of destination. Do you understand? Mm. So you see how easy it is, you understand? That the yeah. seller takes off everything to the port of destination, to where you want the things, okay? Mm. To deliver it, okay? Yeah. Cost and freight, the cost of the cost insurance and freight also at the port of destination. Then cost paid to place of destination also. So not port, rather place, okay? Mm. Career insurance paid to also place of destination. Then delivered a place unloaded. The still destination, the rest are still destination. So the two important areas, the cost and freight and the cost insurance and freight, okay? That yeah. is the port of destination. Or place of destination or CP, GPT or career insurance paid to those two as also those are the part of destination and place of destination. For me, I think that if I want to choose anything, I'll go for those four, okay? Mm. Any of them. Because those are the seller's liability from manufacturing to the port of destination or place of destination, okay? Mm -mm. Good. Good. Then, we look at... Um, So let's look at scenario. An exporter, you need to make a sure shipping and delivery responsibilities are written down and clearly understood. Using international commercial terms known as INCO terms, in contrast, can help you do this. INCO terms are a set of international recognized three letter trade, trade terms. They describe the practical arrangements for delivery of goods from sellers to buyers and allocate the obligations, cost, cost and risks between two parties. They are produced by International Chamber of Commerce. Have you heard of it, the ICC? Yes, yes, I've heard of International Chamber of Commerce. And updated periodically to reflect changing trade practices. It's very important that they are updated because things change every now and then. Okay, then let's look at why, while you are negotiating a contract with a buyer, you need to discuss an agreement. One, where the goods will deliver, isn't it? Yeah. 
who arranges the transport, isn't it? Yeah. Who handles and pays for the insurance? Very important. Mm -hmm. Who handles custom procedures? Who pays any duties and taxes? For example, an exporter might agree to deliver goods at the exporter's expense to a port in the in the customer's country. The customer might then take over responsibility, arranging and paying for custom clearance and delivery to their premises. The exporter might also be responsible for arranging insurance for the goods until they reach ports, but pass this cost onto the customer. Are we are we clear on that? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. So by asking these questions, you know what the buyer wants, isn't it? Yes. And then you look at mm -hmm. what is viable. If you think you can do that, you charge them, you do that and charge them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. But that should be part of your uh, company uh, terms and conditions, isn't it? You yeah. ask the questions and then you ask the questionnaire and then when they answer, then you know what kind of freight you want to put in, whether I want to use Mescli or you want to use and then you have some special arrangement with those shipping lines and then you will charge the shipping line cost and also charge the custom delivery cost, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. As well as delivery details, the contract should cover payments. They should include what currency payment we made in. Of course, we normally use dollars, don't we? Yeah. How much will be paid? Whether they have to pay some deposit upfront and pay the rest upon arrival. When payment due and what payment method would you need? Is it one week payment? Is it one month after delivery or one month before delivery? Okay. Mm. All these have to be clearly spent in your terms of condition and your contracts. Now, exporters in this services in this service sector cannot use income terms. Why? As there is no fiscal product that has been shipped, isn't it? Mm, I don't quite get that. Let me go for that. Let's it's look at it's compared to the exporter here. Mm. For example, an exporter might agree to deliver goods at the exporter's expense to report in the customer's country. The customer might might take over responsibility, arranging and paying the custom and clearance and delivery in their premises. Mm. The exporter might also respond for arranging insurance, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So when you go further, it then is contract for service exporters. Okay. Eh? Contract for service exporters. Okay. So the first one is for goods. Yes. Okay. So now, exporters in the service sector, those who export, mm. eh, cannot yeah. use incotents. Okay, so in this in this in this situation, the ex what is export what is being exported is a service. It's in the Thank service you. sector, so yes. there is no physical product involved. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. It's a service. Okay, so it's not a good being transferred. Okay. You understand me? And there is no physical product that has been shipped. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm. Therefore, when you are negotiating for contract for service provision, it is important you define exactly what service you are providing and to what standards. Mm. That you say, you use normally call SLA. Have you told me? You remember I told you that? Mm. Yeah. Service what? Level agreement. You remember? Mm. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, I remember. So in the service sector, we use what we call service level agreement. Because you are not shipping any goods. So the level agreement is where you capture everything legally and binding among the two parties. Okay. Terms of payment. Do we what what when would you be paid if it's you are exporting? At what point are they paying you? Are you paying offhand before you deliver? Okay. Or mm -hmm. are they paying parts before? So all these things have to be clearly defined. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so you can you can Read more on this with the WTA, eh? the World Trade Organization. Okay. Okay. Look at more information on the international trade and all that. Who is involved in the contract of carriage? Who is involved in the contract? Obviously, we know. Once there's a carriage, there's a carrier, isn't it? Yeah. So the carrier, whether road, rail, we all know that the carrier may be a freight tracking carrier, air cargo carrier, ocean carrier, etc. And the user is either the consignee or the or the concern, or do you understand those things? Yeah. What's the understanding of that? 
uh, the consign the consignor will be the person who is to receive uh, the consignment. Okay, all uh, right. Okay, so the consignee is the one who is to receive the, yes, the consignment, the and the consignor is the one who is uh, giving out the thank or, you. Yeah, giving out the consignment. So consignee is always the receiver. Mm, okay. So you, in, if you have seen a bill of lading before or contract documents, you always see consignee. Mm. The one you consigned what, you know, yeah. assign your goods to. Mm. You're the receiving person, okay? Yeah. And normally you see the person's name on the bill of lading or the contract terms. It has to be mentioned. But you also have normally the date, you understand, mm. of receiving and all that. So... With that document, that is what will enable you to go to the port, okay? Yeah. And clear the goods, isn't it? Yeah. So your name is mentioned there, isn't it? Mm. And if you are using an agent, you have to give those bills of lading to the agent, isn't it? Yeah. To clear on your behalf, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. That's why it's stated here. So everything I'm saying is stated here, okay? An agent of fit for that may commonly agree to act as an agent, either consecutively or even simultaneously for one or more merchant party contract of carriage or otherwise assume some rule involving giving of gra you know gratis okay or advice on other services okay are we there yeah so the agent is only acting on the concern but the agent, the agent can also act for the concern no, as well do you agree yes you agree yeah yeah the concern may have an agent also in Ghana that cares their goods for them isn't it mm, yeah Thank you. Without the meeting of concern and concern, let's look at a contract of carry defines the legal responsibility of the carrier of the carrier and the user. The carrier may be a free tracking carrier, air cargo. You mentioned it, haven't you? The carrier carriage of goods in an international freight ship line has been standardized by international convention. These requirements ensure uniformity in the application of rules and laws. In particular, the standardized contract of carriage included in all career contrast terms and conditions and referent, reference in freight forwarders, terms and conditions set minimum standards for career liability and responsibility, for instance, in case of loss or damage. The convention also standardizes the rights and responsibilities of shippers and their freight forwarders. Mm. Do you understand that? Yeah. Very good. Let's proceed. Why do we think you are talking more about freight forwarding? A freight forwarding agency contract may be described as a contract whereby a contractor, okay, whether described as a forwarding agent, a freight forwarder, a delivery agent, or a carrier, agrees to act as an agent for a principal whether concern. Have you seen that? Mm. Or concerning? Do you, okay. do you not understand my question? Yeah. So a claim agent or trade forwarder can either act for both sides, isn't it? Yes. There may be some big organizations abroad have their agents in Ghana. They are the concern, no, but because they, they are big, they don't, they may be in Sweden or Switzerland, okay? Mm. And, or they have their agents yeah. in Ghana, isn't oh, it? Okay, yeah. Yes, in that when there's a ship calling at the Thermal Port or Sakurade Port, they are not going to travel from Switzerland, would they? No. To calm down, but they have an agent that they pay them, isn't it? Yeah, to represent them in Ghana in terms of any clearance of their goods and all that. In that case, it is the concerning that's going to deal with that agent and not the concerning dealing within themselves. Okay, yeah, yeah, exactly. Or the other way around, there could be an agent that also will act on behalf of the concerning, isn't it? And yeah. the concerning says that I'm expecting some goods from Mesk line arriving this, but because I'm not well versed in the um freight forwarding industry and all the paperwork i'm i'm appointing you as my um uh, agent isn't it yeah. to go through the custom process and do everything for me isn't it yeah exactly but that's what that, that's the meaning of that in procuring a contract of carry between the person and the carrier this role is typically to be contrasted with that of a party who contrast to carry in which case absent clear express provision to the contrary, he may delegate the work required in the performance of duty, but not duty itself. 
You understand that? Mm. Not the duty itself, isn't it? Yeah. But the performance of the duty, okay, and not the duty itself. So the concern now with have just a portion, just a portion of the performance of the duty, but not the duty itself to the agents. Do you agree that? Yeah. In loose commercial terms, the contractor, whatever else he may be or hold himself out to be, is a booking agent for the customer, thereby fulfilling the, the counterpart role to that which a liner or a booking agent customarily performs for a career. Do we get a on that or should I explain? Mm, okay. So let me read it again. In loose commercial terms, the contractor is a booking agent for the customer. You understand? Mm. Thereby fulfilling all the contract part rule to, to, to that which a liner or a booking agent customarily performs for a career. For a career. Mm. So what it means that the contractor, whatever else it may be, or hold himself out to be, it's a booking agent. Do you, do you agree with that? Yeah. For the customer, isn't it? Yeah. For the customer has appointed him or her, isn't it? Yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Thereby fulfilling the counterpart rule. It's counterpart rule to that with a liner. When we say a liner, we're talking about a ship, okay? Or a career. Or a booking agent would perform for a career. Mm. Are you getting it? Yeah. Okay. Determining whether a contractor has agreed to fulfill such an agency role in respect of the role or at least some part of this work is often not an easy task. Contractors com commonly perform the functions of both career and forwarding agent in the same transaction and perform sometimes even for the same customer. <laughs> you understand the whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> you see how these career agents sometimes make money? Mm. Because in some situations, it may be the same person representing the concern, no, isn't it? Yeah. And the same person representing the concerning, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So you see, matters may also be very difficult. In that situation, very difficult for the considerable degree of inform inf informality encountered in contracting arrangements of the parties where the contractor is not an actual career, and also by the fact that. Standard terms in common use typically provide for contractor to have the option to make performance in either a principal contractor or agency role. Indeed, in those infrequent cases where nothing at all may have been especially agreed in this respect, as where the point is not addressed by the parties and no standard terms are incorporated into their contract, it will fall to the law to infer what was intended. And the most obvious inference in such case may be that the contractor has the option to perform in either capacity. Is it, is it clear on that one as well? Mm, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, let's go for that. A contractor may be an agent to arrange, but at the same time around certain features of the contract is to arrange what we call the end to or some aspect of the third party's performance of that contract or maybe entry. An intermediate, if somewhat remote possibility, is that the contractor agrees to undertake an intermediate role between that of a career and an agent limited to procuring courage by another person. But without doing so, as an agent for his customer, although it has been said that such a rule is neither likely to be inferred lightly, do you get understanding of that as well? Yeah. Are you sure? Mm, it's uh, it's uh, self-explanatory, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. So let's proceed. You have these links there that you can you can always copy. And um, let me share on this.
So let's look at the international treaties or threats. We have treaties. We have the Treaty of Lisbon. We have the Treaty of the Nice. We have the Treaty of Amsterdam, the Treaty of the European Union, which we all know. The Maastricht Treaty. We have the Single European Act. We have the Major Treaty, which is more of the Brussels Convention. We have the treaties of the Rome, EEC, and EU top treaties. Treaties establishing the European Co and Still Community, the EU, the NAFTA, and then ASEAN. Okay? Yeah. You can read about them. Let's look at how we can analyze tariffs and duties that affect prices of imported or exported goods. Uh, goods used in Incotem. The latest version of Incotem is the Incotem 2020. Which you have mm. the Inco Incotem 2018, which was amended. Mm. Okay. Which came into effect on 1st January 2020. Mm. The new version is similar to the previous one. Incotem 2010, but takes into account developments in commercial practice and updates the rules to make them easier to use. Okay? Yeah. So let's look. We, I mean, I've, I've explained this already. So it's here. You, you can get more explanation from the right tab, okay? Okay. So it's there. Ex Express. Have you seen that? Mm. The seller means the goods available for the seller's location so the buyer can take over the transportation. You, you remember I said that? Yeah. The all the All the cost is there. Then free career. The seller is responsible for the delivery of goods to the name career. In other words, whether ship, whether truck, whether rail, okay? Mm. The responsibility for the cost and risk then pass on to the buyer. Free along ship. The seller must place the goods alongside the ship at the name UK port. In the name UK port. The risk of loss. Why, why only UK? <laughs> mm -hmm. So there's an error there, okay? Okay. That's amend it, not the two. The name port. The risk of loss or damage to the goods passes when the goods are alongside the ship and the could, bar best all the cost from that moment. Mm, could the writer be using could the writer be using UK port as an example? Like correct, correct. Mm. Then free on board, another popular one, free on mm. board, FOB. The seller is responsible for all the costs involved in the process up until the goods are loaded onto the vessel at the named UK port. Mm. Once goods have been loaded, the buyer is responsible for the cost and risks involved in the onward shipment. Onward shipment as another commonly used. Then cost freight. Seller must pay the cost and freight to bring the goods to the overseas port of destination. Popular ones. Cost insurance freight is the same as SCFR. However, the seller must obtain and pay for the insurance. The default level of insurance cover under CIF is Institute Cargo Clause C. This applies to both 2010 and 2020 income terms. Okay. The mm. carrier insurance paid CIP, which you know about it. Um, the default level of insurance cover CIP is Institute Cargo Clauses. This higher level of cover for CIP than income term 2010. They are delivered at place unloaded. I've explained that. You can read more. Delivered duty paid BPP. That is very important. You have to read about it. Then let's go further. Incoterms are globally recognized set of standards used worldwide in international and domestic contracts for the delivery of goods. The rules have been developed and maintained by experts and practitioners brought together by ICC. They have become the standard international business rules settings. The trade terms help traders avoid costly misunderstanding by clarifying the task, costs and risks involved in the delivery of goods from sellers to buyers. Incoterms rules are recognized by the Unisectoral as the global standard for interpretation of most common terms of foreign trade. Very important, very important. It was launched in September 2019. Incoterm 2020 will come into effect on 1st January 2020. Okay? Please note, note that all contracts made under Incoterm 2000 and any other previous editions remain valid. And parties to a contract for the sale of goods can agree to choose any version of Incoterms rules. However, we recommend you using the most current of version of rules, which is Incoterms 2020, okay? Mm. That's all you have to read more. You have to download and read more about this. 
nonetheless, it is important to clearly specify the chosen version. So in case you answer your question and you are you have to a bit state the reference, okay? Yeah. It's more of Incotemp Inco 2020 rather than Incotemp 2000, okay? Yeah. And some of the references you have here, we have the forwardlaw.com, the tradefinanceglobal.com, and the Incotemps in international trade. Those are things that you can read more about. Mm, okay. okay, so Mr. Dabi, do you have any question? Uh, no, I'll read and then I'll go through them. Please but read. For now, I don't, yeah, I don't have a Please question. Please go to your learning. Mm. Okay. Yes, I, I also believe that we did one and two, so I'm a bit confused the message you sent to me. Yes, for one and two, then one and two. So, yeah, so I mean, I, I'll, I'll send a message. I don't know why they said they don't have the recording. I don't know what's happening. So I'll cross check, okay? Mm, okay. So thank you. Yes. Yeah, uh, so, so tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow, I'm sure. We'll yeah, do you fall, fall, right? Tomorrow, yes. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you, right? Eh? Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.